Hey everyone, my name is Ed and in this video I'm going to be giving you a brief introduction into the FTC driver hub. We use this to connect to the robot, to plug in joysticks, to select our autonomous routines, to configure the robot, and so on. Now you can use any driver hub to connect to any robot, so long as you know that robot's password. Here I have the Rev driver hub. This is basically an Android phone with a special case around it to add some ports. We'll see we have a network port right here. We have some USB ports, which uh, we can use to plug in some game controllers and control your robot. There's a USB-C port right here. We use that to give the device power to charge it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on by holding the power button. All right, so the device is now on. I'm going to go ahead and unlock it by swiping up. So you'll see on the home screen we have a few different apps. We have the software manager, we'll use that to update the device. We have the FTC driver station, we'll use that to control the robot. And let's say none of this is actually on the screen right now. So let's say this one, for example, is just missing. What you can do is you can swipe up and click on one of these to drag it back onto the home screen. The first thing we're going to do is uh, connect it to internet. You can do that by either swiping down from the top, long pressing on Wi-Fi, and you could connect it to a Wi-Fi network. I'm actually just going to plug it into an ethernet cable, and I'm going to go ahead and click on software manager, and I'm going to click on update all. So that is doing its thing, it looks like. So you should do this at the start of the robotic season, probably September, October or so. Uh, you should make sure your device is up to date. So it looks like everything's up to date there. Next, I'm gonna show you the FTC driver station. To launch that, we'll click on FTC driver station. We'll see at the top here, it says, I am currently disconnected. That's because I'm not connected to my FTC robot. So to connect, what I'll do is I'll swipe down from the top, long press on Wi-Fi. And this one is my robot right here. So I'm going ahead and connect to that. Enter the password. We'll see that is now connected. So next I relaunch the FTC driver station and we'll see we are connected. So now that I'm connected, you can see some information like the driver station battery, the robot battery. Now that our robot is connected and everything, uh, we're gonna need to set up controllers. Now I like using these Logitech F310 controllers. They're pretty inexpensive and they can take a beating, so they're pretty good controllers for FTC. Uh, this changes some of the button layouts, make sure it's in X mode, and we're gonna go ahead and plug it in via USB. And then once it's plugged in, there are two different controllers we can set up as. We'll hit start A. We'll see we have user one set up. If I hit start B, you see it changes over to user two. So start A and start B. This lets us set up up to two controllers to program the robot to do different things. And now that we have controllers plugged in, we can go ahead to these drop down arrows. And the left drop down arrow will let you select your autonomous routine. The right drop down arrow will let you click select your telop code. Once that's done, we go ahead and click in it. And then we can click start. And your code will start running. Here I've got some information being displayed. When we're done, we go ahead and click stop. And then the program stops running. Now often teams borrow driver hubs from other teams and it might be connecting to the wrong robot by default. So to resolve that, what we can do is swipe down from the top and go to Wi-Fi. And you should see whatever robot is connected to. Let's say that this is not my robot. What I could do is to make it stop connecting, I can simply click on that network and click on this forget button. And that'll make it so the, rob to the, so the driver hub no longer connects to that robot automatically. And I could scroll through here and find uh, whatever robot mine is called. So the control hub is a pretty cool piece of uh, hardware. But one of the common issues I see relates to the battery. So I'll go ahead and show you how to access the battery real quick and cover some tips I have with that. To start, I'm going ahead and power off by pressing the button up top and click power off. And we'll wait for all the lights to turn off. There we go. So you can access the battery on the back here through this uh, Phillips head screw. So I'll go ahead, go ahead and unscrew that. And after pulling back the cover, you'll see the battery here. Now, one of the things that very often happens is this battery can sometimes move around a little bit in this housing. And there are some contacts up here. And sometimes this battery gets a little loose and it'll disconnect from those contacts when in this housing and that can cause the 
driver hub to actually turn off. One of the quick little fixes to, to take like an index card, fold it in half a few times, and stick that in the gap right here. Kind of push the battery up and stick it in there. And that'll help keep the battery kind of wedged up against those contacts. What you can also do is get a USB battery charger and plug it in via USB-C and that'll provide it another power source so even if the battery kind of disconnects you'll still have power over your USB charger thing. I hope you found this video useful. I'll be going over the robot side of the control system being the control hub and the expansion hub in a future video. Until then, take care.